is an evangelist, was an evangelist, and he's going to be an evangelist in Central America. I mean, he's been here all week, and I'll be here a, a couple more days. He's been an open-air campaign, so he's one of the tools that our pastor has that he's learning from Eric Briscoe, where pastor learned from uh, here in Boston. So he's on the streets of Boston. Think of that. This, this, this Tico, this guy from Costa Rica, he's being exposed to Bostonia. <laughs> and so I thought that's sort of like being stoned, isn't it? You know, you're in Boston, but Daniel, please come and share your message with us. Uh, so the mic is in front of you. No, so we're going to watch TV first? Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> then you can just come in. There are 42,688,190 people in the seven countries that make up Central America. Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. While 85% of the population of Central America is Catholic, many gospel preaching churches exist as a result of missions. These countries have never experienced an extraordinary movement of the hand of God. They have pastors, missionaries, church planters, but one ministry is lacking, the ministry of the evangelist. In Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, there is a list of gifts that God has given to local churches. God includes the gift of the evangelist because it is the work that no pastor or missionary can do while they're planting local churches and training workers. The churches of Central America do not know or understand what revival is. They conduct evangelistic campaigns, missions conferences, and special meetings, but never come together as one body to call upon the Lord for spiritual awakening. As believers, we need the presence and power of God back in our churches. We need to come together in unity and repent from our sins and cry to God to move among us. Another aspect of the evangelist's ministry is to encourage pastors and strengthen the churches. Many churches in Central America are closing as a result of the pastors becoming discouraged and lonely. Pastors are normally so busy preparing messages, planning activities, and training other students for the ministry that they do not find time to refresh themselves. Some do not have any support from other pastors in their area. Churches are going astray because Satan knows how to attack the leaders. Hello, we are Terry and Sally Sanders, directors of the Lighthouse Children's Hope of Costa Rica. Today we have the privilege and blessing of introducing to you a new evangelist, our son, Daniel Sanders. We're excited about what we've seen God do in his life, and I as an evangelist am definitely excited of seeing uh, this young man called into this particular ministry. As I've been a full-time evangelist since 1984, and now I have a son who's also a full-time evangelist, but in a special area of ministry where we do not know of any Bible-believing, Bible-preaching evangelist, again, in those countries of Central America. We covet your prayers for uh, God's direction in his life, for God's provisions, that God would use him mightily in this unique area of ministry. I am very excited about the spiritual growth that we have seen in Daniel over the last five or six years. He has always manifested a servant's heart since childhood and now has a passion for God's word and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that God has great things in store for Daniel. And we would ask you to prayerfully consider 
having a part in his ministry. My name is Daniel Sanders and I am a native Costa Rican. I got saved at age 14 after hearing what Christ had done for me on the cross. I continued seeking the Lord to serve Him in every way I could. A year later, I was able to take a mission trip to Panama. There I had the opportunity to lead several children to the Lord. God used this to burden my heart about the need people had for salvation. On a second trip to Panama, the same thing happened. I knew then that God was dealing with me about serving Him full time. I had such joy watching people coming to Christ for salvation. About, upon graduating from high school, I began studying at Calvary Baptist College in Central America to prepare myself for the ministry. After sensing the Lord's call and being under the influence of a true evangelist, my father, I believe with all my heart that the Lord has called me to be an evangelist to the Spanish-speaking countries of Central America with the purpose of preaching Christ, encouraging pastors, evangelizing the lost, and seeking the Lord for revival in our churches. This is why the Lord has led me to establish Casa Ministries. Casa in Spanish means house. 1 Peter 4.17 says that judgment must first begin at the house of God. Since my burden is to call the churches of Central America to a spiritual awakening, I have chosen the Lord's letters C-A-S-A to represent Central American Spiritual Awakening. To date, I have had the privilege of preaching in Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, and in many churches in Costa Rica, as well as in the United States. I believe that the ministry God has for me is to preach the gospel to as many lost people in Central America as possible, and to call the churches to true revival. I'm thankful for how God has supplied every need thus far and based on His promise of in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing. He that which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I know that He will always remain faithful. I believe my calling from the Lord is to do the work of an evangelist, but I will not be able to do it by myself for I need God's people to join me in prayer and financial support. Thank you for prayerfully considering becoming to be a part of this ministry. Good evening. Um, like you heard, I'm Daniel. Sanders from Costa Rica. I, I know many of you, uh, many of you have been to Costa Rica. But uh, first of all, before, before I start uh, the message and introducing the ministry, I want to thank you, thank you, I want to say thank you to the church for supporting the Lighthouse uh, Ministries. Uh, I have a sister that's a, that's a missionary in Panama. I was telling in the video that I went to a, to a mission trip to Panama and uh, I went, I went there because my sister had invited us, and uh, she had this big ministry, kids ministry, children ministry, up in the in, in way inside the reservation. We we walked about five hours um, to get to this place to the Indians, and uh, right there I gave my very first lesson in front of people, kids. I remember, I remember, like if it, like if it was my first day, uh, I I gave the lesson about uh, Joseph, and uh, that's my favorite lesson. And after the lesson, I had the privilege to lead several children uh, to Christ. I saw how they trusted the Lord, and and um, the following year when I went back, I saw the very same kids now helping Diana, my sister. Uh, bringing all other kids to the, to the BBS. And so uh, we've got my sister Diana. We've had, we, we have my brother David, David Mora. He's an assistant pastor. Uh, we've ha we have Jimmy, Jimmy McWaters, my brother. Uh, he's, an he's almost, he's like an assistant pastor in my home church. And uh, we have many, many, many others that have uh, 
that work for the ministry, that aren't in the ministry, and you have part of that because of your offerings, your support, and, uh, and for your prayers for us. And uh, you have me, too. <laughs> and uh, you have part. You have part of that. Uh, I've led several. I've, I've, had, I've had the privilege to lead several ch- people to Christ. And all that, it's because of you, because of your prayers. And, and uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for your prayers. We need prayers. And uh, I saw, if you, you saw a, one of the pictures in the video, uh, a, a vision for revival. That's what the Lord has put me in my heart. He has put in my heart uh, a vision for revival. The churches in Costa Rica of Cent- or, or Central America, we don't know what revival is. We have never experienced a, a extraordinary move of the hand of God. We have never felt that. We have never experienced it. Uh, the United States, we, uh, you had the Great Awakening. Uh, in Canada, there was a great revival. Australia, uh, China, uh, Korea, South Korea. There, there's a lot of Australia. Well, there's a lot of uh, uh, revival histories that we can uh, hear from. We've, we just had a, a, a big revival in a, in a, in a, in a South Carolina just in 2016. And uh, God did something big. He did something big in the churches. And uh, many people, they, they confuse what revival is. They think that revival is uh, going and preaching the, the word of God and uh, evangelizing the lost. But if you, if you read in, in uh, Matthew 28, the verse 19 and 20, he tells us, he commands the believers to preach the gospel. That's a commandment to us, to the, to the church, to every believer. And, uh, and so evangelizing the lost, evangelizing the people or witnessing or planning mass evangelism programs, there, that's something we do for God. That's something we're commanded to do. Revival is what God does for men. That's what God does for men. We can't, we can't uh, provoke a revival. We have to listen to God. We have to let Him do. We have to listen to Him. So he, so he can bring revival to us. If, uh, if, you, if you know 2 Chronicles 7, 14, the big revival verse, Bible verse, it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. It doesn't say if the government shall humble their, themselves or if the president or, or uh, the, the politician, is, if they humble themselves, they, maybe God can hear our prayers, and He will answer, and then He will move between us. He, that's not what the Bible says. It says, if my people, and that's what the church needs. The church need, needs revival, and that's what the Lord has led me, uh, has given me, has burdened my heart with. And, uh, and so what, what, what does revival really mean? And in Psalms chapter 85 and verse 6, the the verse says, Wilt not thou revive us again, Lord? Revival means that it this thing was once alive and it became it, it became uh, uh, cold. It died. Because if it's revived, it means that you, you were once alive. And that's what the churches need today. Many churches are dying. Pastors are quitting. Uh, it's sad to say, but uh, I have several friends that are ex-pastors, ex-missionaries. Uh, I have my, my, uh, my Sunday school teacher from, from when I was a child. I went to his house and to invite him to church because I know he hasn't been to church in years. So I went to, I went to his house and I asked him, uh, it, I, I told him, it's going to sound weird because you were my, my uh, Sunday school teacher. And uh, I remember you telling me, come to, come, if you come next Sunday, I'll give you a prize. 
if you come, if you come uh, on Wednesday to the kids club, you, you, you'll, you'll get a check in your, in your paper and uh, we'll, you'll get a prize. You're going to be blessed in church. I remember him telling them, telling, I, I told him, I remember you telling me that. And so here I am. Uh, I'm, not this, I'm not your Sunday school kid anymore. And uh, I'm here, here I am inviting you back to church. And uh, he told me, I, that's not for me. That's, that's not for me anymore. I, church is not for me anymore. And it's sad to say that many people don't want to serve God anymore. But that's the reality. We need revival in our churches. We need revival in our churches. Second Chronicles chapter 34 and verses from 1 through 21. I, I won't read it because of time. I want to share the story about a real revival. Many people think, well, God moved. He can move again. He's the God of today also. He can do it again. He can bring revival in our churches again. And uh, this uh, going to the sketch board, all, uh, open air uh, campaigners, that's, that's helped me a lot Cause, because I, my, my, the ministry God has for me, I believe, is for the church. But I have never seen what the need is outside of church. I have never seen today, just today, I was rejected uh, maybe a hundred times or more. I've, I've never seen that. People, people don't, can't see what we're missing out. People can't see because we're dead inside the church. We need to be revived. We need people to see, well, God is moving there. God is, we need, how, how wonderful it would be if Fox News or CNN or the president will be tomorrow morning or next week will be will will say and and the TV if he if he could say well if you have time please go visit Calvary Baptist Church in in uh, in Loudon no this is Dedham Dedham in in Massachusetts because God is moving there how wonderful it would be if people came from everywhere uh, from every part of the world and see what God is doing in this church. That would be awesome. And God can do it. He can still do it. He can still move between us. He can still do, bring a revival in our churches. But this, this story here in Second Chronicles 7, 34, 34 and uh, those verses, I'll, t- I'll summarize the story about a, na- a young kid named Josiah. This young king, verse 1, tells us that he started, uh, he started ruling when he was just 8 years old. When he was 8 years old, he started ruling. And uh, verse 2, it says that he started seeking, he, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He started doing something that many of us are missing today. Even in, 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 in our adult in our adulthood, we're missing out something. We're not seeking after the Lord. We're not doing what, what is right before the, the, the eyes of the Lord. That's why we need revival. That's why people can't see us. That's why people can't, can't accept a, a track because, well, I don't want to be like them. I, I, don't, I don't know who that God is. People don't see it, don't see it, because we're not giving glory to God. We're not praying. We're not reading our Bibles. We're not in church. We need God in our churches. We can't be like the church in Laodicea that many, many people use it for salvation to share the gospel, that Jesus is knocking on the door, and if you let him come in, he will save you. But if you see the context of that verse, he's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the church and he's telling the church, if you open the door, I will come in. I, I, I'm going to be in, in there with you. But why is he outside? Why is the Lord outside? Why is he knocking on the door? 
I, 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 the preacher has said revival has to come because at one point, point of our lives, we were filled with God. Everything in our lives was God. Everything. But at one point of our lives, we started letting ourselves get inside our lives. We started living what we wanted to do. We, start, we started doing what it was right in our eyes until one day we were so full of our, ourselves in us that the Lord couldn't fit anymore. That's why we need revival. We need revival. But the, but the Bible tells us that Josiah was eight years old when he started, when he started ruling Israel. The next few verses tells us that uh, when, he, when he was a, just a young kid, he, tell, he told the people to clean the whole city. They started burning idols. They started uh, uh, getting rid of the false prophets. They started cleaning the whole, air, the whole country of Israel. And they started cleaning it because there was something that wasn't, that there was something in there that wasn't supposed to be there. There were idols. People started having idols before God instead of God. Many people started doing what they wanted, that what they liked, what they liked to hear before God instead of God. And it's and that's a, that's a reality in our churches today. We have we have we have uh, what we like to hear. We have uh, we have idols in our in in our lives. How about football? Basketball, how about the TV, technology, how about other stuff instead of God? That's placing our idols in our lives. But the Bible tells us that he started, uh, he started breaking the altars of, of ba ba Baal, and he started, uh, uh, he started breaking all, all, the, all the images, and they cleaned the whole house. But in Second Second Kings chapter twenty-two, Second Kings chapter twenty-two, the Bible tells us that Josiah was sitting in his throne, and and the people, and he told the people that whenever they collect all the money from cleaning uh, the, the 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 whole the, the whole area, the whole country, whenever they get all the money together. They would. They had to give it to the people, the builders that that had that were uh, that were fixing the temple, the house of God. And uh, Josiah told him, "Go give all that that money to them because they're going to fix the, the 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 house of God." And so they did. But when the builders, when when the people came and gave them the the money, all the money that had they had gathered. The builders in the church, the, in the house of God, they, they told the, the, the man that came with the money, thank you for the money, but here we, we found something else. We found, we, found, we found the book of the law. The, and the Bible tells us in, in verse 20, in, in chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, and uh, in verse 9, it says, and Saphon, the scribe, came into the, to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and, and have delivered it into, into the, ha the, the hand of them that do the work, they, they that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Saphon, the scribe, showed the king, saying, saying How Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he, he rent his clothes. He rent his clothes because he, re, he heard the, the words of the book of the law, the Bible, the word of God. And why did he rent his clothes? Why, why would he do that? He heard that the words were against Israel. The Bible tells us in, in, uh, in, uh, in, verse, in verse 15, 
in 2 Kings 20, 22, 15, it says why the, the king had, had, had rent his clothes. And it, it says, and so they, they went to the, 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 uh, the, the Hilkiah, they went to one of the prophetesses, and, and she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, the, tell the man that sent you to me, tell the, Josiah, tell him, tell him this, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah had, hath read, because they have forsaken me. Listen to this. They have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall, my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus, thus shall ye say unto him, Thus says the Lord of God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender. Look, listen to this. This is revival. Because thine heart has, was tender, and thou hast humbled thy, thyself before the Lord, when thou hearest, hearest the, what, what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, curse and, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in, pray, in, in peace. You saw what, they, what, what happened? He rent his clothes. He told the people to burn every idol, to kill every false prophet, every false god, because he heard something. And because he heard and he did something about it, the Lord didn't bring his wrath upon the, the land of Israel. Why? Because of the grace of God. He wanted to do something else in that land. He wanted the people to praise the Lord, to give him the glory again. He wanted the people to remember, I, I fed you in, in, the, in the wilderness. I, I gave you water. I gave you food. I delivered you from the, from the Egyptians. That's what I did. I deserve your, your glory. I deserve you giving me all the glory. That's what we need to do. We need to praise the Lord. Revival is discovering, rediscovering the book. And not only rediscovering the book, but desire the word of God. We need to desire what the, what the Lord has to say about us. What, what, the, word, what the Lord has to say about what, about what we've done with Christ. About what we've done in the church. And rediscovering the book also means that we have to hate what we were doing. We were replacing the Lord. That's what rediscovering the book means. And rediscovering the book also means a love for the, for the house of God and maintain, maintain it like, it like it's supposed to be. The Lord has to be inside. And he has, to be, he has to be acting between us in the house of God. We need revival in our churches. We need the Lord acting. We can't let more churches close because we're not doing the right thing. We can't let this church, Calvary Baptist Church, we can't let it close. We need to come back to God. We need to let the Lord do. We need to return to Him. Maybe there, there, is, maybe there is stuff going on in our lives. Maybe there is something going on in your life that aren't, that's not letting you give God the glory. Maybe, maybe there is something that we need to do in our church. Maybe we need to come back to the Lord. Maybe we need the Lord back in our church. 
revival is a recep reception of the book, of the book of God, of the, of the word of God. The, the, when, we, when we have revival, this book will be the first thing we're, we're going to read in our day. Will be the first thing we're going to be doing every morning we wake up. We're going to be in the word of God. That's what revival will bring. Re revival will, br will convince us with the, will convince us from our sin. Revival, the word of God will convince us from, from our sin, how we're living for the Lord. Maybe we're not doing enough. Maybe we're, we're trying our best, but the Lord is not answering because there's something in the church. Maybe we, ha we all have to humble ourselves so that God can hear our prayer, so that God can act between us. And revival is repentance and restoration. The King Josiah, when he heard the words, the words of the law, he rent his clothes. And he did something. He restored the land. He restored the temple. We can't let other people think, well, you, you don't want to be, you don't want to serve the Lord. You don't want to, you don't want to be in church. Go. We got to draw them and make them, you, you make them, make them feel like the Lord wants you to serve Him. We got to let, let, let them know that they're important. We need to restore them. We need, we need to restore ourselves. We need to restore the house of the Lord. And that's the purpose of revival. That God will be glorified. That we will humble ourselves and come before Him every day. Every morning we're in the house of the Lord. Every, every time the doors are, of the church are opened, God is going get, to get all the glory. And only God will get all the glory and honor because He deserves it. And that's, what the, what, that's what we need in our, in our church today. We need revival, spiritual revival. And it only starts with you individually. It's, it's got to start with you. If, you. if you want the whole church to see it. It's got to start when, in us so that others can, can see there's something in Him. There's something in her. God is in there. God is not knocking on the door anymore. He's inside. That's what we need to do. And uh, that's what the Lord has laid on my heart because I see the need. I see God has opened my eyes to see what the pastors go through. They see people come and go. They see people... They, they get discouraged. And, they, and, and when the pastor is discouraged, the church is going to close down. The church is going out. And Jesus won't be inside. So that's what the Lord has, has put in my heart. But I can't do it by myself. Like I said in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the video, I need your prayers. And I also need uh, uh, financial support in Costa Rica or Central America uh, evangelists or, or missionaries can't live out of the offerings of the of the church because um, you're lucky if I if, if you get a, a a love offering if you go to speak or or they'll give you sixty dollars and that would be a lot for them and so that's why I need the financial support that's the reason I'm going on deputation for this, for this uh, few uh, two months, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in the states. So pray for me. I need your prayers and pray for your church, because the church needs revival. No matter which church it is, no matter how full the church is, no matter how empty the church is, we all need revival, and we need the Lord acting. That's it.